uh, the hidden resistance. Mr. Yen, a 20-year-old uh, gentleman from uh, Pulcheri, uh, who is a known traumatic spinal cord uh, injury patient in 2018 with residual paraplegia, admitted in PMR for rehabilitation. On uh, admission, he had a fever for five days, which is high grade and continuous, breathlessness for uh, one day, no cough and cold, no chest pain or palpitations, no burning micturation or those tools. So he's a known case of rheumatic heart disease. Mitral valve replacement is done on 2015. So on examination, he was uh, tachycardic, uh, tachypneic, with temperature of 99 Fahrenheit. And his saturation is maintaining 99% and 4 liters of O2. Um, CBS is a pansystolic murmur in the mitral area with first half arm click. The respiratory system shows captations in the bilateral lungs. So uh, CNS is a power in the upper limb, uh, shoulder and elbows 5 by 5, wrist joint 4 by 5. And power in the lower limbs are 0 by 5. Stone is increased. Sensory systems, bilateral lower limbs, pain, touch, and vibrations were lost. So, the summarizing, Mr. Yen, a known RSG, the post of mitral valve replacement, presented with a clinical syndrome of fever, breathlessness, and pansystolic murmur in the mitral area. So, what we considered were infective endocarditis, probably prosthetic valve uh, endocarditis, and lower respiratory tract infections. So the uh, investigations is a uh, an investigation. He was anemic with hemoglobin of six and with AK of creatinine of one point nine seven. And urine routine were normal. And echo was done. We showed echogenic mobile mass on the ventricular aspect of the prosthetic mitral valve, medially measuring sixteen mm into eight mm, suggestive of a vegetation. So blood cultures was then initial blood culture on 30, 10 was uh, negative, but uh, uh, repeat blood culture on 2, 11 came past, uh, showed a grow methicillin resistant cephalococcus RES. So based on the clinical history and uh, uh, investigations, I came to the diagnosis of prosthetic valve infective endocarditis and methicillin resistant cephalococcus RES. So the patient was started on vancomycin. The dose was adjusted based on the trough levels. The patient cleared of bacteremia on day 6 of mancomycin, as, uh, as you can see in the blood uh, culture blood, and uh, taken on 5th and 8th. So, but the patient continued to have fever spikes. After clearing of bacteremia, patient still continued to have fever spikes. The differentials we considered were MIC, uh, that is an increase in mancomycin minimum inhibitory concentration over the duration of therapy, or a hetero-resistant MRSA strain. So the vancomycin susceptibility, CDC definition for classifying uh, cephalococcus RS susceptible to vancomycin is based on minimum inhibitory concentration. So vancomycin susceptible cephalococcus RS have a minimum inhibitory con uh, concentration of less than or equal to 2 max. Uh, vancomycin intermediate minimum inhibitory concentration is 4 to 8. Vancomycin resistance is uh, more than 16, uh, minimum inhibitory concentration more than 16. So heteroresistant vancomycin intermediate cephalococcus RS, the new entity called, uh, it was first reported in Japan in 1997. The, these strains of cephalococcus RS are susceptible to vancomycin uh, with a minimum inhibitory concentration less than four, but contain subpopulations that can grow at a concentration of four mics as well with a minimum inhibitory concentration of more than eight. Mechanism of resistance in heteroresistant uh, vancomycin intermediate cephalococcus RS involves Complex reorganization of cell wall metabolism, which leads to grossly thickened cell wall with reduced glycoprotein cross linking. So, this is a study uh, showing the uh, study uh, which showed the uh, existence of hetero resistant vancomycin intermediate cephalococcus RES. The study done in a teaching hospital in Argentina, the study sample of 92. Uh, then the results showed a H visa strain isolated in uh, out of the 92 patients, the three patients H visa strain were isolated. Uh, this is another study showing the uh, rp b and regulator gene mutations in vancomycin intermediate cephalococcus RES, which leads to the uh, development of h visa So as, in, as you can see in this uh, graph, uh, the black mark depicts the uh, mu3, it's a variant uh, strain of uh, h visa which shows uh, growth uh, both in the uh, above the four mics as well. The X, X graph shows the vancomycin minimum inhibitory concentration. As you can see, uh, the, uh, in the black bars, there's uh, some strange subpopulations are still growing above the four mics of uh, uh, minimum inhibitory concentration. So that's a study regarding the vancomycin resistance uh, uh, intermediate cephalococcus RDS treatment with uh, 
the abdomen is after listening this report the patient presented with a fever for two days the blood culture grew uh, mrsc so transthoracic echocardiography so small mitral vegetation the patient was initially started on vancomycin blood culture remained positive on day 15 so sequential isolate in this case uh, came for hvsa then the uh, then he was changed to daptomycin and ceftriaxone on day 26 the cultures were sterile and the patient completed 5 weeks of the combination therapy of daptomycin and ceftriaxone without bacteremia recurrence so the synergistic effect of daptomycin and ceftriaxone as you can see in the picture uh, when it's a ceftral uh, only when it's a daptomycin the minimum inhibitory concentration is 0.125 and uh, ceftriaxone minimum inhibitory concentration is 0.38 but when both drugs were combined as given the minimum in, minimum inhibitory concentration is uh, 0.008 So, ceftriaxone binds to penicillin binding protein 2A. It reduces the cell wall cross-linking and thickness, which leads to enhanced adaptomycin access to the cell membrane. So, coming back to our patient, the vancomycin was stopped. He was started on adaptomycin 700 mg IV OD and ceftriaxone 400 mg IV quetiapine and rifampicin 400 mg BD. So, uh, after starting the uh, combination therapy, his uh, fever spikes came down and he was uh, stable. So the duration of therapy continued for four weeks. So an alternate of linezolid was also considered, but is not given in view of anemia. So this is antibiotic uh, antibiotic antibiotic acid uh, done for uh, daptomycin. This was a minimum concentration of one. So the learning points consider the possibility of heterogeneous vancomycin intermediate cephalosporins in patients not responding to vancomycin therapy in spite of low minimum inhibitory concentration. Thank you. Any questions from the audience? Uh, did we uh, redo an MIC on the subsequent step? What is ultimately the treatment essentially? Um, after after that, too, my son. No, I think when he was not responding to randomizing, learning the MIC was low. Yes, ma'am. Uh, did we do uh, an MIC on the subsequent no. positive cultures? No, no, we didn't. Because the, the next culture came negative after the. Uh, No, on pancreatic, the oh. cultures remain positive, right? Yes, ma'am. So, like when the staff do, how, like how do we, I'm asking you, how do we diagnose HVSA? Yeah, it's a possibility. It could be an MIC creep, and it's a clinical suspicion that it could be a possibility of HVSA. So, you have done a repeat MIC. Yeah. With you, uh, like the staff that could be later after you were on adequate. Yeah, we could have done, but no, we missed it. Any other questions? 